I got a new pickup this past week. In the first few days, I've uh, filled it up with stuff, gotten it muddy just from doing irrigation stuff. Now I drove it through a muddy field to shut down this pivot, so I'm really getting it initiated. Meet the Peterson family. Our dad, the three Peterson brothers, and our families farm together in central Kansas. Our family farm started in 1882 and has been raising cattle and crops ever since. Please subscribe to this channel and give us a like and a comment if you enjoy the video. So the thing about these Kansas thunderstorms that we finally caught one, pretty happy about it, is you can't really shut down the irrigation pivot until you know you're actually getting the rain. Like we only got a quarter inch, see that light on the horizon? That's the pivot running. So the storm came through earlier, we only ended up with a quarter inch and I just kept kept it running, but now uh, it's almost 10 and we've, we're up to an inch because more storms popped up that they weren't even predicting. So I'm gonna go shut down the engine real quick and so here we go I'm gonna pay attention when I'm driving down the muddy part of the road you come in let's go Letting the uh, the river pump engine cool down here and uh, shutting her down for the last time this year. We're done pumping on that corn. Should have enough to to finish out. It's funny because we're already uh, picking the dryland corn and uh, the irrigated is still a ways off. But uh, but this will be the last pass for for this one. I'm shutting it off here and uh, we'll hopefully get it pulled out of the river and uh, it's always good to feels good to be done with with one pump and hopefully be done with well we're gonna have to be done with all the irrigation here pretty soon because uh, we're running out of water and then we'll just wait for it to rain I guess um, but you served us well buddy see you again next year all right, Nathan and I and Dad just pulled the the uh, crane. It had fallen down over here. We used the cable to pull it out of here. And now we're gonna try to get that that post straightened and braced. We didn't have it braced well enough the first time. Put this wire on here to brace it from this direction because that's the direction it fell. So if we have braces from both directions, it should stay in place. Problem is we don't have any trees over here. So we're pounding in some posts. All right, we got it uh, braced and we've taken all the pipe and, and different things out and the, uh, the pump and the river screen are ready to be pulled out of the water now. So I'm gonna back the dodge up and hook onto it and we're gonna use the crane as leverage and pull it all out of the river.
she is gonna be done with this patch. So this field is um, actually the corner of uh, our, our big circle pivot that you can see there. And uh, it's actually kind of a big corner because it goes back um, into the pasture kind of, so it's about 24 acres. It works good to, uh, this whole field was wheat um, with, the, with the pivot, um, but we put double crop soybeans under the pivot and then did this uh, sedan grass on the corner where it don't have as much confidence to grow uh, double crop soybeans. And you can see here where the uh, beans, the pivot doesn't quite reach. They're only about ankle tall. Um, but where the pivot does reach, and we've been able to put on three inches of water so far, um, they're looking a lot better and they actually have a lot of potential. I think they could be better than our full season beans. The only problem is we are out of, well, we only have a little bit of water left to pump on them. So it'd be really nice to get a few more late rains to help them finish. But you can see these are knee high, which isn't, it's pretty good for double crop beans. They got a lot of, a lot of flowers and a lot of pods coming on if we could just get some late rain. Uh, that inch 70 went a long ways on this irrigated ground to help get that pivot ahead and, and um, we'll be able to make about one more circle with it I think. But hopefully we can get a little more help from mother nature to finish them out. But it's just one of those tough years so nothing's guaranteed. But it's good to see this up here because I haven't, I haven't been to the back side because um, it's kind of hard to get back here. But when I was up here so often, I can see it all. And I was, I was quite pleased how the sedan grass did too up here. It, it was good and thick even though it didn't get real tall. So still getting some production even with the hot dry weather. And uh, we sure are thankful for the rain we did get. We try to plan. You always have to plan for too much rain and too little rain at the same time. So, uh, and then you take what you get. So I'm actually gonna head to the lake when I uh, get done with this field. So I've been driving extra fast, you know. But a nice thing to do on a hot Friday afternoon. I started, well I started around 9.30 or 10, it was already getting pretty hot then. So I think Greg and Kendall are out um, fencing, so they're probably hot. I'm going to take this rig home and uh, head out to the lake for another weekend of rest and swimming. So, thanks for following along. We are fencing um, this cover crop here. It doesn't look like much, but uh, there's spots where it's better than it is besides here. Obviously with not very much rain. Fencing our forage mix for the fall pears. So they've started calving, there's like 12 to 15 of them born. Uh, so this is pearl millet, dwarf sorghum sedan, turnips and radishes. We're doing a double hot wire uh, all the way down from the road all the way to that pond. The pond will be in the south. So the pond will be in the northwest corner and we'll make it into a few paddocks so that they don't just have access to all of it at once. And it is a nice uh, 97 degree day today. Yeah, so it's pretty nice when the sun goes behind the cloud. It's pretty nice. Perfect day to be fencing when it's 97. But there is a breeze. And yeah, the sun is behind the cloud right now and it actually feels pretty nice. So. Why well, you can't drive away? I got the post leaning uh, over. Oh, look who it is. The third brother. He's Coming the over from the air conditioned swather and tractor. Hey. I didn't ask for that job and chose Now me. he's going to the lake. Yeah. Me. Come on. Kendall, you just got back from vacation. Yeah. I've been touring for you. Yeah, I was at the lake too, kind of. We were at a pond. <laughs> An Airbnb. A pond.
<laughs> it's a pretty nice Airbnb. Yeah. You got a nice background it's behind you. No. It's too hot to tell you that it rained. Well, this definitely doesn't need swath yet, but. We ran out of double posts. Greg, Greg brought a bag out. People always have to pull the doubles off and make them into singles, and I don't understand it every year. <laughs> it's probably dad. <laughs> I don't know where all our insulators go. I guess they all break. Caps break them. Okay, I'm going to leave. You'll be back Sunday. had another half inch of rain here another lifesaver for these beans got another rainbow so um, these August rains are are liquid gold for us August rains make beans and most of our beans held on to August some of them didn't make it we we've got a, definitely got spots in fields that that died or that that aren't gonna yield very much but most of our beans made it to these August rains. And I think the worry was that these August rains wouldn't come, but they came and we are very grateful because we know a lot of people uh, didn't, didn't get any. We're falling down. <laughs> You saw Greg and Kendall uh, fencing this forage blend cover crop. Uh, we'll be turning cows out here pretty soon, probably this week. Here's one of the first sunflowers out and you can see it's got lots of two honeybees and a whole bunch of other something or another. I'm not a entomologist but Getting lots of pollination done. Pollinators are important. You can see a few scattered sunflowers starting to pop out. Uh, that inch 70 we got didn't go as far as we'd like on the uh, grain crops. But this, this stuff has really come on strong with that rain. So it's just amazing to see uh, what it can do and I'm pretty confident this will actually bank moisture over the winter as long as we get something um, and it'll be really nice to plant corn or milo into next year pretty happy with how it looks besides the fact that too many pigweeds still got through which uh, <clears throat> is in part from the weed pressure from past years and I sh kind of should have known that on this ground and maybe just planned on spraying twice and then drilling it but I, I didn't want to run out of moisture to drill into so we went ahead and drilled it and then a lot of pigweeds came up with it which if I'd have waited um, waited and sprayed it twice and then drilled it might have been better as far as pigweed control, but we might not have had as good a stand, or we'd have had to wait a long time to get moisture to drill it. So it's all kind of a learning experience, and these pigweeds don't allow much room for error. They're just ready to sprout about eight months of the year. Makes it really hard around here. But we're trying to learn to outsmart them and uh, nice good heavy residue helps we've noticed uh, helps block them out 
and then or when they do sprout they kind of all sprout at once and then you can nail them real good as long as you get on them in time so happy with how that looks thanks for watching everyone check out our music videos linked in the description you can also follow us on facebook instagram tiktok twitter snapchat and explore our website www.petersonfarmbrothers.com see you guys next time